So I'm happy to be here to, uh, uh, to lead the discussion on, on positive aging. I spent uh, 40 years at Middle Tennessee State um, uh, talking about this issue, uh, teaching a lot of different classes. A lot of research was conducted in this facility by myself and some of my graduate students over the years. Uh, that research is very important to, to really the prolonging of our senior centers and documenting the impact it's having. You know, the question is, coming to the senior center, how does it impact your life? Does it change you in any way? And we have found that it, that it does significantly, especially in the health and promotion kind of activities uh, that you might engage in. So, so we appreciate those of you that might have an opportunity to participate in research. I know through the years it enabled us to go to the city council, you know, and, and request more funding because we were able to document that it was making a difference uh, in your lives. And that's the only way that, of course, we know that is really to look at what we call those outcome measures. What are the outcomes? Uh, and one of the things that people always mentioned, you know, in terms of that they did take away from the coming, coming to St. Clair Street was their knowledge increased. You know, you have to have knowledge sometimes to, to make changes and incorporate kind of things. And that's one of the things that we, that we provide here. So it's um, really, enjoy the relationship over the years that our university has had with the senior center here in terms of our students coming and, 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 and got, getting a lot of opportunities, of course, to, uh, to work in this area and to engage in their, you know, their, their placements here and that sort of thing over the years. So really appreciate that, uh, th those opportunities that I've had. Our presentation today, we're gonna really kind of focus on really becoming more conscious about our age, the aging process. I mean, what can we do? Um, for some of us, it may be a little bit, you know, down the road in terms of our, our time here, but we always have, we always have more time. Uh, we, we're in, really in kind of a new territory. Some of you may look and see here some things that might excite you. Uh, for the most part, in, in, uh, as humans have inhabited 30 to, four year, 30 to 40 years was life expectancy you know, not very long. Uh, but now we know that it's in, it was 47 in 1900. Um, and today if you reach 65, uh, women, if you live to be 65, you get 19 plus years, 19 and six months or something years added on to that on average. So you're about 85. Uh, and if you, if you take men and women together, it's 83. A little bit of difference when you look at, uh, look at, uh, uh, race actually Hispanics live a little bit longer uh, than, the, than than whites do, and and blacks are just a couple years younger overall in terms of average. A lot of times that has to do not only just with old age, but it has to do with also uh, sometimes uh, other kind of things that's going on among our younger population uh, as far as early deaths. But 60% of women who reach age 70 can expect to blow out your candles. This is based on Center for Disease Control's latest analysis done in December of, of this past year. Now you all have to worry about is reaching 70. Some of you are already 70. <laughs> Some of you are hoping to get there. And so um, if you reach 50, if people have reached 50 without any cancer or any other diseases, really the opportunity to reach uh, 90 is... is, is uh, uh, is projected is easily easily achieved. So what we're seeing is, of course, people are living a lot longer uh, than they used to. One of the favorite books that I used for my own uh, life, I guess, and, and also just for my students, was one written uh, in 1995 or 96 by Gail Sheehy. Uh, she has she wrote about 17 or 18 books before she died in. Uh, in 2020 uh, at age 84. Um, and the book that really uh, was called New Passages, Mapping Your Life Across Time. Mapping Your Life Across Time. Uh, it became a bestseller on New York Times. Uh, it was considered by the uh, Library of Congress to be the, one of the top 10 influential books, influential books. Uh, at that time, up into that time or whatever, I don't know when they made that, that uh, determination. It was 
it was uh, converted into 28 languages. And, and what she found in her research was that, in going around the country and collecting research, that during that time period, during the 90s, and of course we still see this, that, that adolescence was being moved back about 10 years. Uh, and that, and we still see that today where it's, in other words, people are going to school longer, they're hanging around the house longer, we have 30 year olds still staying, staying with mama, you know, whatever. I mean, and so it's just, we're delaying adulthood. I mean, we're pushing what we call real adulthood back. That's a change that we see from when many of us grew up, when a lot of people got married right out of high school, you know, and got a job and, and everything. So now we're delaying that. But at the same time, we're also pushing back old age and about 10 years in terms of how, how, not only how long we live, but how we live in terms of healthier lives, more active lives. Uh, so one of the things that she talked about is we, we can now choose how long we want to live. In some, in some capacity, uh, and, and how much we want to put into it. When we talk about positive aging or healthy aging, in other words, we can, in, we have, we can impact uh, our longevity uh, if, uh, if we choose to do that. A lot of other people may live unhealthy lives, and they're impacting their longevity as well. You know, their, in other words, their lifestyle may not enable them to, to be uh, one, one of the super agers. Uh, so uh, this is a picture of a tree, the tree of life here. Uh, and it's, you know, talks about life is the only, only, the only race you run where you don't really have a finish line. You don't know what it is. And some people say you shouldn't, there shouldn't be a finish line. Sometimes I, in my class I thought we're all marching toward the finish line. And what we say is, well, there's not a finish line. You just keep going. There's never a finish line. I mean, you, did, you don't really say, well, I'm, you just keep prodding along, whatever, and pushing that finish line back. This, this tree, of course, looks very complicated, doesn't it? You know, as we get older, old trees, we have all these branches. And, and that we, that's why we call it the tree of life. The longer we live, the more experiences that we have. Think of these as pathways different pathways that we take, high road, low road, etc., or the new branches that might grow out. But today we're going to talk about our pathways, pathways to positive aging, or even maybe become what we call a pathfinder. A pathfinder is a person that actually finding new paths to follow, where others might follow you. And that's what we would call in the, in the new, in new aging. You know, back before, I think, in the other, uh, how do we grow old in, you know, in, in this new age that we're living in now? Because it is, it is very different uh, than it was when many of us grew up. Uh, so science research tells us these things about positive aging. To, and today is really not going to be so much about physical aging, we could talk about nutrition and those kind of things, but we want this is more of a talking about the, the mental component, the mental toughness, you know, that that sometimes we need in order to uh, to engage in life because sometimes it's hard. Sometimes we watch sports shows and they'll talk about they, or the coach say we just need to be mentally tougher, <laughs> you know, mentally tougher. And, so, you know, when they say, they said old age is not for sissies, that's what they're really talking about. It's a tough business, you know, to, to, to get up every day and, and, to, and to, to, to the challenges that we may face and doing, doing in a positive way. Uh, so, you know, so we're the only creature looking at mind and body that can, our mind influences our body. We know that st what stress does what worry does in terms of impacting the body, our health, our, our resistance to disease and those kind of things, our immune system, 
is imp impacted by what our mind is doing. I've been to some really great conferences here on, 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 on caregiving that, where they talked about, you know, how you have, you're able to, the importance of meditation and breathing and all that sort of thing, uh, you know, and how we can actually control some of those things. Uh, so just being optimistic, just being optimistic, just having a positive attitude has been correlated by, by using control in experimental groups with being able to live longer. A 2019 study, positive, you know, just positive thinking added significantly longer life. And we know we have these ageist attitudes then, of course, here that, that sometimes we get these negative reactions from other individuals that create the co a cognitive decline. When we're dismissed, our ideas are dismissed, uh, or that we feel like that, that uh, we no longer matter you know, to family members or, or whatever, or young. So we, sometimes we have to constantly, you know, fight back in terms of those ageist attitudes uh, that we might f find. I had a student once that, uh, a number of years ago, that was chiding me because I was wearing Levi's. <laughs> well, <laughs> so I, my generation started wearing Levi's, you know, in the 50s. What's your, what's your generation going to do be, to be unique? You're criticizing me. You, know, you need to find something else to wear if, I'm, if what I'm wearing is bothering you. <laughs> you know, so you know, there's a study that came out this last week. 53% you know, of the general public think that older people shouldn't be wearing sneakers. <laughs> Still today. I'm sure they wouldn't approve what the shoes I have on right now. Why would, you know, so we have these ageist attitudes that constantly, even though we're talking about a different kind of period, time period, there's still that resistance of accepting older people as, you know, we did, we used to live in a time when younger people, 1600, 1800, was called the golden age of aging. It's because we had an abundance of food, older people were, were, viewed in a very positive way. They got the front, they got the set in the front of the church, down front, close to the minister, because they, you're closer down there, you're closer to God. And then it was, it, then it came out the other way, all the way back. And then you had, the children love this because they got to set the back, you know. Uh, so, so it was, of course, black folks, I ended up having to be you know, out in the whatever, you know, doorways or whatever. Outside. Outside. So, you know, just to acknowledge where, kind of where we were. So, you know, the girls who would, dress, would try to wear dresses to look older, our early forefathers, what do you think they wore wigs for? <laughs> to look older. You know, the men had older, you know, wigs. So we had this really is a, a positive attitude toward aging at that time. Very positive attitude. Uh, and then 1800s, as we began in industrialization, we went from this gerent of failure, which is reverence for older people, to gerent of phobia. Oh my God, you're scaring me to death. You know, when they look at older people, you frighten me. And so some, sometimes children are frightened by, when they look at older people, it scares them. Uh, so that's, we can have a whole, we can have a whole sermon on that. I've got a I'll come back sometime. We'll talk about the, the historical kind of changes if you want me to do that. Uh, uh, so reactions to normal aging, of course. Not everyone can be a super ager. We have people running 90 years old that's running marathons. Yes. See, not everyone can do that. Uh, but, so we have, we have to look at kind of what we have, right? What, what, what are the cards we're dealt with? Our aches and pains, the, you know, all the kinds that we're dealing with our turkey neck a little bit here, whatever. Uh, typically, my wife and I start our day, she reaches over to see if I'm warm or not. Oh. <laughs> Just say, well. <laughs> and then we kind of go from there. And we kind of go from there. You know, can we get out of bed? Well, do, do we need to have, let's try to get to the coffee or maybe go back, to, need to go back to bed for a little while, whatever. And we all have, those are challenges, you know, we, we have, the ordinary person sometimes has. 
that we had in terms of trying to deal with these issues. And we, so we had this age creep that gradually kind of comes upon us, right? Oh my, there's, uh oh, there's one coming out there, gray hair. And so then we, it just kind of gradually, slowly, day by day, uh, creeps up on us. And for, for those of us that are in the old, old category, it continues to creep along after us as well. Then we have those that, that maybe deny. You know, the, the age deniers, it's not going to happen to me, whatever. We have people that reach old age a day that has, they don't have a will one. They haven't made out their will. They haven't done any, they haven't picked out their songs. <laughs> you know, they leave that to everyone else to do. I mean, it's like, oh, we're just going to live forever. You know, so we're trying to deny. And so that's not healthy either. Because what we want to do is uh, we don't want to run away from this because you know, if we're looking at just the, the beauty of the unfolding of our lives, you know, the, uh, to embrace the positive things of aging. What, because this is all normal and natural. It's natural to, as we go through the different stations of life. Uh, and so as that unfolds, then it helps us then continue to kind of plan for the future. Whatever age that we are, <laughs> We want to try to be the, the, the best person that we can at that particular age. Um, if you have any questions as we go along, we'll be, take them, but we'll certainly have an opportunity to discuss these things as we get to the end as well. Learning how to age. A lot of emphasis is based on growing up. I mean, we're having a tough time <laughs> getting our children uh, into, the, into adulthood today. There's so many, it's such a hard world today for children to grow up in. When it should be an easier, you know, time, time to grow up. But because of some technology in many ways, it's made it even more challenging uh, for parents and grandparents to raise children today. Um, neuroplasticity is a term that, that's really talking about rather than getting plastic surgery, you know, getting our our tucks and whatever, our lifts. This is basically doing surgery on your brain. Neuro, uh, wh where you're really kind of trying to delete some of this worn out con conditional kind of ways that we condition thoughts and beliefs about aging. Remember, remember the golden period of aging. You know, during the colonial America, when older, when older people were looked up to. So that's, that's, in many ways, that's what we're trying to, uh, uh, to, to revive. And, and we're having to kind of rewrite our script. So we have that old script, the old script, that as, as older people, okay, I'll start dressing a certain way because I'm getting older. You, should I be wearing this my, you know, at, at this point in my life? Uh, people are criticized today if they, if they, if they dress like younger people. We didn't cr criticize children in the 1600s because they're dressing like older people. Uh, so that's what we know about, about this youth-oriented, obsessed society, which they think that uh, whatever they're doing is uh, anyone else that, that's, that's basically emulating them. So the new script, you know, what gets better with age? What gets better with age? Can you, has anyone got any ideas? I'm trying to find a, <laughs> huh? Wisdom, all right, wisdom. Knowledge, okay. Experience. Huh? Experience. Experience, yes. All the experiences that we had. These, so we, we have a lot of things to build, a, a, a strong foundation that, that the freedom, just the freedom. We, sometimes we can go, we don't become childlike, but we can go back to ch childlike features in the fact we don't care what other people think. I mean, we can be honest because we're not, we're, you know, we're not trying to get a promotion anymore. Be willing to change. Be willing to change. Excellent point. You cannot grow without changing. Children change because they grow. Laugh at yourself. Laugh at yourself. Great. <laughs> Great. Yeah, and lead the laughter. That's right. Um, so... So, so we're looking at purposeful aging. Purposeful means that it's intentional. We're, 
we're, we're thinking about a map, you know, Gail Sheehy's map across time, mapping out your own life. And she talked about, of course, um, at that time she was talking about people in their 40s and 50s, etc., all the way across. And accepting these without judgment and shame. Uh, this might be shameful, but we can't, you know, we, again, this is kind of reality, right? Remember when we were young and you saw that old, that old man and said, I'll never try to leave the house to dress that way. Shoot me. So she's got a gun <laughs> <laughs> ready to uh, take him out. Uh, calm, uh, okay, calm down. That's, that's not whistling. They're wheezing. Uh, so uh, uh, again, that doesn't depict, real, but that's, again, a reality, right? Uh, it is important to, uh, my dad went into assisted living. We took him to a, a, a new place, and uh, he was going in to eat for the first time. And there were some, some little ladies who were sitting over here, not the men. And they were, and I heard one of them say, he looks pretty good. Because <laughs> uh, he was ambulatory, you know, he was ambulatory. Uh, so it's very important. Um, just, a, just a quick, a quick story. If we, you know, since we got plenty of time here, right? Uh, just a quick story. Uh, there's a conference here when I first moved here in the in the 80s, and uh, uh, Sister Michelle from St. Louis came. I'll make it quick, uh, and was presenting, and, and she was uh, the uh, nursing home administrator of a nursing home uh, in St. Louis that was a, a Catholic nursing home. They only had women. The only man in the facility was a janitor. So she met with her staff, said, look around, don't you see, you know, see what problem we have? So they decided, long story short, we're gonna make it co-ed, we're gonna invite men into the facility. For first time. What do you think the women started doing? They started getting up and dressing. <laughs> they started pulling their things, their stockings up. And they started, when those men came in, they started looking at them. And the point we're making here is that you never get too old. You never get too old for intimacy, your presentation of self, uh, and the need to, to love other people. We have people in nursing homes that sometimes get in the bed with somebody else, not for sex, just to touch someone. Right. Touching is a very powerful... They, no one has touched them. No one has hugged them. Huge in terms. So the point we're making here in terms of needs, we're still alive. We're still alive to the very end. And part of the positive, part of positive aging is kind of to, to realize that. And other people need to realize it too in terms of the, uh, you know, that because sometimes we look at older people and we see that you know they look unloved. Are, are we, when, when two older people are, are even holding hands, people will make fun of them. Look at those two old lovebirds. What do they think they're doing? You know? Uh, so, so it's very important to, 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 to think about that as part, part of our attitudes here. I know we, sometimes it's fun to, to, to laugh at something. It's not funny, but it's funny, you know, in, in that kind of way. But we, again, we have to laugh at ourselves and, and laugh at some of these issues as, as they take place. These are three rooms that looking at our life view that we find ourselves in. Uh, I find myself in all of these rooms in one day sometimes. So you have the top, the top room in terms of is the positive aging room where people live uh, in later life. And that would be an age to explore that's optimistic, empowered, and having a positive view about later life. You have a healthy lifestyle and you stay engaged, embracing aging and overcoming the fears. So we have about 45% of our older adults that would kind of be in this category. And then we have some people in the middle, the practical aging room, where you have this, where you're content. You try to stay positive, but you're not fully committed. You're placing your bets that everything's going to work out okay. You know, uh, we're hopeful with that, you know, we'll make it to old age. And, but you're still kind of anxious about that as we approach later life, about 20% there. And then we have people in this, the bottom category in God's waiting room. And those people aren't here today <laughs> because you people are, you know, people that come to the senior center 
are not sitting around, you know, waiting for your clothes to dry, I hope. <laughs> You're coming here, you know, to, uh, to cause trouble, you know, <laughs> cause trouble you know, to, to the, the, the staff here, you know, challenge them, you know, right? Uh, so people waiting for, you know, this very pessimistic, uh, and so we, again, we'll try to be as optimistic as we can. Not, not that some days I'm not here. I'm, I, you know, some, I'm sick and tired. Some days I wake up sick and tired. <coughs> Sometimes my wife would say, yeah, warm, I said, you need to check it again. Am I, you, are you sure? You see, I'm still, still warm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so you just don't. So, but eventually, of course, the next day may be better. And so we do, we do shift around regarding that. But so what we're looking for, you know, how do we, how do we move people up, you know, toward that more positive aging kind of category? Because we know the outcomes. We know they're positive. Uh, if we want to live longer uh, and how much we want to put into that, that process. Um, another favorite book of mine that I've relied upon a lot uh, is one by Ashley Montague who said, as, die young as late in life as possible. He wrote this book called Growing Young. And the whole emphasis was really on that we're designed to have this, the, this promise of a child. We grow up, at, we come into the world as a child. And we have these traits. These are some of the traits that children have. And what he says is that sometimes what society does is they try, to, they try to wring those traits out of us. Grow up. You know, quit acting like a child. Etc. And so we know that these things are very important in terms of when we see children playing and the sense of wonder that they have. One of my friends just got back from, from um, a work. She, he was presenting a paper and, and they took her family and they were talking about one of the little children and what they, what they, some of the things that they saw and how kind of a sense of wonderment as they, they looked at some of the things. And he said, I think he might end up being an archaeologist. So excited to see those things, you know, children. Um, and, and so the, what Monique was arguing is that these traits are part of us. These child traits are part of us. Just because we change in age doesn't mean that we have to give these away. We don't have to give these away. Because this is why we laugh at ourselves. Our inner child, we laugh. Humor comes from that child, that childlike trait. You know, it doesn't come from this parent thing that ego state that says you know, grow up and act your age, or when older people are out, you know, doing things and that sort of thing. Uh, questions on this, in, in terms of just so sometimes we are preoccupied. We, we sometimes we discount what old people, how, what they can contribute. Because, because of their experience, because of their wisdom, they actually can be a lot more creative you know, than people that are looking at their iPad 24-7 or playing computer games you know, in terms of solving problems. Uh, and, and again, that's again, being part of an ageist society. That people are too old to do this or too old to do that. You know, and I used to just going to the library, you know, going to MTSU. I would just kind of get excited going in there, looking, and you, know, you couldn't get my you couldn't get my students to go over there. You have to give them money to go to go to the <laughs> library, you know. But it's it, again a part of that notion here of oh, all this this information just you know is, is out there. So when we quit when we quit uh, when we quit exploring those kind of things, then we stop growing, as you were talking about. When we quit learning, you quit growing. And so I've, I found that sometimes college students are already old. Because they don't have a sense of well, curiosity. I would tell them, you know, we'll be having a great lecture. This is something you go read. Last, now, uh, I give them, I come back with $1,000 next time and, you know, I would still have it when I left class if they, if they looked it up. Not, not curious whatsoever. No curiosity. 
Again, looking at an ageless society. This has nothing to do with age. Um, but it just, it's, again, again, think, emphasizing the child. Because, that, because that's, where, that's where that positive aging component can, can c come from. <coughs> Willie Nelson just had his 90th birthday party. <coughs> you can see that on YouTube if you'd like to. Here's a quote he said not too long ago. I think youngsters need to start thinking about what kind of world they're going to leave for me and Keith Richards. <laughs> so they keep going. His song, On the Road Again, that's the long, last thing he, they sang on his birthday party. It's, it's shown on YouTube. On the Road Again. With his family, with his sons. Of course, his, his, his sister died not too long ago, but he's still out there being creative. He's, he's recorded over 150 albums. He has a new one coming out in the fall. Um, so, you know, continue to work. Continuing to contribute. Of course, the, the thing that's keeping, the keeping a lot of these older people out there and people going to their concerts happens to be a lot of older people, you know, baby boomers that grew up with them. You know, and one of the things that we haven't talked about in terms of I, those of us here today should be, and, we, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, but on, on, on gratitude, I'll bring it up later. This is just another group of people that, of course, these are all not really role models that we might have, but there are, there are people out there that's working that, that are famous that, that are still doing things. Uh, Clint Eastwood's 93 and still working. I saw a thing yesterday, of, of course. Harrison Ford's come out with his a new movie, new sequel, whatever, and still doing things on the 1923 show with his companion there, et cetera. So these, Dolly Parton, you know, giving away so much money for education, everything, is just a great role model. Uh, and so these people are still going, you know, very strong, uh, so you don't have to stop just because of, of age. Uh, here's a group of people celebrating their 100th, <laughs> so smoking a cigar. Uh, if you notice those two geezers in the middle there, uh, that was taken about a year ago. That happens to be my first sociology instructor and coach Truman Dixon, he's 97 years of age. Uh, that happens to me standing ne next to him, if you don't, can't recognize that person. Uh, he's, he is uh, 97, and I'm 79, so we share those two numbers right now. Uh, still going strong, and he's really the one that kind of uh, lit my fire as far as looking at social issues when I was a senior in high school. Uh, and I, I kind of have to give him... Uh, tribute to, for, uh, for my career in a way, because I, if I hadn't taken that class, I would have never really kind of followed the steps that I did. Um, and I'm, I'm friends with his wife on Facebook, so she's in her 90s, and so uh, I don't necessarily agree with everything she posts, but uh, uh, she, she is really uh, uh, funny. Um, here's some things that, that men are doing out there, again, having, having a big time. Uh, we've talked about aging to the other side, of course, and uh, just, you know, some of the things that we're going through, uh, the time markers that we go through, uh, and we want to get to our, uh, these, are, these are different kind of pathways. Going, think back at the tree, you have all these different pathways. So these are just some suggested ways, there's others, that might lead us to positive aging. I think you have to start with acceptance. Accepting the fact that this is, a normal kind of reality of life. You know, as they say, no one gets out of this world alive. So we know that that's coming, and so uh, it's not a death sentence. Just be proud and thankful uh, that we have this opportunity to, to live during this, the, the time that we're living uh, as a generation. We know that, we, that we're going to experience these losses, physical losses, it's okay to grieve those, to go through the grief, when we no longer do the things we used to could do. Uh, but then but, also losing individuals, but then you go through that mourning process. Mourning is the practice. Grief is an emotional reaction to those losses. Mourning is how we express that grief, integrate those losses, then to go to move on life forward, sometimes without what we used to could do. There's, just to give an example here, 
of a volleyball player in, in Smyrna was in Chicago at a, an event, super event, whatever, and she lost a leg or, was it one leg or two legs? St. Louis. St. Louis, St. Louis, yeah, thank you. Two legs, both legs. But what I've been reading in the paper, what kind of positive attitude she has in terms of coping with that particular loss. Sometimes we, can, we as young people, we see young people and they, they I mean, she's, they gave her a scholarship to MTSU anyway because they were, she can't play volleyball, but she's going to be a, a manager or something for the team, whatever. And, and so, I mean, she could just, you could just kind, kind of crumble up and say, oh my gosh, here I am this young and I've lost my legs. And she's doing just the opposite. She's being a great role model for, for you know, older people, really, in terms of being positive about that. Uh, because I know, I know it's hard, it's hard to transition to, because I watched my father do it, to, you know, to you, have, you have to have a cane or you have to have a walk, all those kind of things that stigmatize us sometimes. But again, just thinking about that, and I'm sure she went through a grief process, grieving that, her family, and she'll always do that. But, and, and we see the same kind of thing, people, of course, that, that are coming back from some of the wars that have, have no legs and they're still out there running marathons and stuff like that, being very positive about what they have, you know, you know, and we have, of course, the, the Olympics. There are special Olympics, too, uh, to, so that they can continue to uh, embrace uh, their, their condition. Um, so liberate yourself. Be true to yourself. Become a pathfinder. You know, you can follow other people or you can be the leader, you know, and shining your light brightly as we look at that. But sec you know, acceptance is very important. Mindfulness. Very important in terms of uh, living in the present moment. I've given you a few quotes here to look at, of course. If you're depressed, you're living in the past. If you're anxious, you're living in the, in the future. And if you're at peace, you're living in the present. Being present, you know, trying to live in the present moment is very important. Being mindful um, of where we are. And it's so hard sometimes, I think, to with, with technology and television, etc., sometimes is finding a quiet moment, being quiet. You know, just listen to yourself, breathe. Another quick story. Sometimes I have some neck issues because of uh, some, um, a couple of discs that have fused, fused together. Um, and uh, so I was heating up a neck wrap. We have a new under, under counter microwave. I know I usually put it in for three minutes. I put it for 30, but I knew I know it for 30. And so I'm going to just sit here and watch my clock right here. And then I'll take, take it out when it hits the 27 minutes. So I walk about five steps over and sit down on the sofa. And I have my, phone, have my smartphone looking at stuff and the TV's on. About 27 minutes later, I begin to smell something. <laughs> it was flaxseed and smoke was, you know, whatever. And, but I was clueless. I was not mindful whatsoever. I was there physically. I don't know where my mind was. It wasn't, it wasn't with me. And I, and I didn't even make the connection. I was kind of smelling, smelling something. And uh, my, my boss was in the bed. And she started <laughs> smelling something. And of course, then we, we ended up burning up the microwave and had to get another one. But... Uh, so I really felt, I really felt bad, really felt bad about that, really. I mean, it was, it, personally, I said, God, am I losing it, you know? So I, I was getting my hair done that week, about three days later. This 31-year-old, I was telling her my story. She said, oh, thank you for sharing this. Just a few weeks before that, she had put eggs on to boil and went to bed. <laughs> and they exploded. And uh, I mean, you know, the shells, everything were just all over the kitchen. <laughs> so then I thought, well, maybe, maybe it's not age at, after all. <laughs> maybe other people also experience the same thing. But, uh, but you can become too occupied. The thing here is being mindful, being in the present moment with our, with, you know, with our, with our life and where we're, where we're living at the time and just to take some time to, to do that, to be mindful, 
purposeful aging as we call it too. Uh, aging joyfully, okay? Always, again, you have to be in that inner child uh, where, you're, where there's a sense of humor, able to laugh at yourself, and, and find out what, you know, what makes you smile. What gives you joy? Coming to the senior center might be one of the things. It could be music. It could be recreation. You know, gardening, walking. All those kind of things that we might do that gives us joy. It could be, you know, your church activities. Um, family, grandchildren. So those are all the kind of things that, that can really give you joy. Um, I think around our house it may be, I think me, my wife seems that she enjoys, I think, doing laundry and doing, cleaning up the kitchen. She's doing that all the time, so <laughs> I'm glad you came today. <laughs> so I think that maybe she's, she must be getting a lot of joy out of that because she's always doing it. So <laughs> that's, that's a conclusion I drew anyway. So. I like to share that joy too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so anyway, but again, again, find out, find, you know, find what, what you like to do. Find what you like to do and, and, and do it. What makes you smile? Um, very important in terms of, you know, joyful. Um, appreciation and gratitude. You know, being thankful for where we are. And that's why I was going to, I think, you know, as a, as a, you know, the generation that we've been able to, our group that we're kind of, going along here with, that we've grow, grown up with. It's been, a, a, it's been a, a good period to grow up and grow old in this country. You know, if you think just, you know, looking at the music and looking at the things that we've been able to enjoy, the uh, artificial intelligence coming, from, you know, down the road, all this might be, more, you know, more fun, but I, uh, I don't think I would trade, you know, kind of what we've experienced, you know, uh, than, than some of what's come, you know, coming down the road in terms of challenges. Who, who knows? That maybe every generation might think that. Um, so you might find one of the quotes that you, that you like there that might be kind of, again, trying to, trying to get you to think about that and, and, and the importance of uh, just you know, gratitude and being thankful that we have this road to travel together with and on and share. Uh, surrendering to technology. Um, again, technology has been important for older people. Uh, senior centers is a good place sometimes people can learn. The research on, on, on older people and, and technology, about two-thirds find that some of the, the smartphones is just you know, kind of over their head and they have difficulty maybe learning how to use those. Uh, but but it, it does help. It, it's almost necessary sometimes to be able to, to, to look at health issues and, and visit. They, they put everything online now as far as, you know, some of your medical outcomes. So it is important to have that sort of stuff, I guess. And also just, again, staying young. I had, I had worked with people at MTSU that retired because they didn't want to, tra you know, transfer into the new technology of putting their grades online and stuff like that. Just they were overwhelmed in their 60s rather than, you know, learning new things. What would our, what would our, my parents and grandparents, when they started the automobile, I thought, I can't, this, this, this guy in this car is driving me crazy. I'm just going to stay with my horse. You know? So every, every, every society's had change. And so part of that can be because one of the things in terms of social media does for older people, it provides us an sense of connection. You can have family groups. You can share pictures. It can, it can you know, reduce the miles, that ge geographical you know, distance that we are. Uh, you, can, you can do, do you know, FaceTime. You can, you know, again, talk to each other. Uh, in many different ways with, with, uh, with social media. It's just you know, being able to do that, bringing together. Uh, un unlike younger people, I think uh, that sometimes it's, we know that you know, younger folks that sometimes get addicted to social media issues, uh, it becomes very competitive for them. 
Uh, they, we know that they're more depressed. It doesn't place human interaction or face-to-face -face interaction. But for, for people that are isolated and living alone, it can be a good place for, to, to, to go to, act, to, to enhance us and create a more positive experience as far as aging. Uh, in case you just needed uh, a few symbols for older people for text if you're trying to figure out some of those things. So, uh, I just threw that, threw that in there. So if you want to throw those out to younger people, and you can educate them because they always have these whatever. So you can let them guess what some of these prefixes are, right? Laughing my dentures out, you know, that's a little better than laughing my whatever off, right? <laughs> so uh, uh, bring your own teeth, all right. Um, one of the last is, is really uh, stimulating our senses, staying engaged. Something that the Senior Center uh, ha has done as a mission. Uh, we can see that there is a need to have a tribe or a group, what we call a convoy is the people that we tra are traveling together with through our life. Younger people have their own convoy. Sometimes they will come and travel with us, but, but usually it's very important. A recent study that looked at 270,000 people over in 100 countries found that these family friends are very closely associated with, with better health, and friends was actually it was a stronger, stronger impact on health link than our family. So our close friends, you know, that we share life with, sometimes it would be, is more meaningful than, than family members. Sometimes we're not, not, might be living close to family members, but having these, this network, and we know that uh, this was one of some of the research that, that we did earlier, that uh, coming to the senior center um, promoted 81% felt their mental health had improved 71% felt more empow empowered, and 53% felt younger. So I guess when you leave today on your thing, on your sheet, if you put, you feel younger after we've talked about this, so just put that down there so they'll know that we've had a positive impact. Uh, so, you know, so it does, it does help to come, and, 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 and I know that a lot of people come to the Senior Center and make new friends here and do things with them. So. A lot of activities that you can engage in, of course, putting your wisdom to work and helping younger people sometimes, tutoring them and mentoring them. Um, leisure activities, you know, there's a story to tell. Tell your story. You know, you can write your story in terms of kind of, uh, you know, short stories about around different components of your life. But that, that can all be very important in terms of just uh, stimulating your senses, you know, uh, also, the senses would be, you know, smelling and going out and, you know, taking walks, you know, getting in the environment, flowers, all the kind of things that we can do to, to uh, stimulate our senses. Very important in terms of being positive. Um, and then just kind of balancing our, you know, our expectations as we move through the life course. Sometimes we have to make some changes. Um, in terms of those balances, uh, hopefully we have time to maybe talk about, you know, how, how maybe how COVID impacted your expectations with age. Uh, that we some things that we've all experienced, uh, but we we typically then uh, try tr try to cope with this. We become more interested, of course, in uh, other other things other than just you know things that are no longer as important. Interaction. Material things, you know, are less important to us. Um, um, again, going back to uh, where we are, uh, this was a, a quote uh, from uh, uh, Sherry's thesis that she went to back to her home country in Mexico. Uh, and this is what some, one of the people that she interviewed uh, and their retirees that have moved uh, uh, to this particular community, but I thought she captured kind of what we're what we're talking about here. Really, is that um, that as we get into this old and old old age age group, uh, there are some dark and troubled you know sides of life, 
as we deal with, with losses. And just, you know, this week I, I lost one acquaintance, a friend broke her hip, another friend was diagnosed with breast. Just think of all the things that she was going through in that one week, you know. So sometimes when we, when we have this close-knit group of friends or whatever, a lot of sometimes these things are, 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 are taking place. But she says, as best we can, celebrate each day. Continue to celebrate. You know, uh, you go the grief process, the mourning process, but you continue to close the circle uh, and go on and and uh, uh, and live that that let your life for them and continue to take take that relationship and those experiences with you. Just because you've lost them doesn't mean that they're not still with you. Uh, and so that's very, I think, kind of touches on what we're dealing with in terms of fact. We do acknowledge that these are some of the realities that, ha that happen to, as, we're, as we're, you know, on our, our different pathways. And just some final thoughts, of course. Uh, I like this, but nobody can go back and start a new beginning, but anyone can start today and make a new ending. A new ending could be doing something special for your family. It could be writing your memoirs. It could be some, anything that you could do for, you know, going forward as far as uh, creating some kind of plan of what you want to do. Uh, dream as, as if you will live forever. Live as if you will die tomorrow. I'm not afraid to die. I just don't want to, to be there when it happens. I think, I think George Burns said that one years ago. When he was in, uh, you're as only old as you can remember you are, so I think that's a, that's a good one to remember. And, uh, uh, of course, trouble life, and this is part of that song, Keep on the Sunny Side. So live all your, live all your life, live all your life, and, and keep on the sunny side uh, of that. A lot of changes going on today, even in nursing homes. A lot of studies coming out that being positive, creating positive moods in nursing homes, we think that would be the last place we want to go. But they're actually changing, you know, the, uh, the script there. And, and, and people are thriving and, and embracing that community. Uh, so even if that's a, the last station, people are still having a good time and, and still are practicing you know, positive aging because now we're understanding more about how to do that. As we extend life, you know, how long do we want to live? So as we get into those 80, 90, 8, 9 you know, decades, how do we still make that meaningful? How do we still make that meaningful? And that's our challenge. Um, any questions? I, I, I appreciate that. Um.